and and she goes, quit calling me Tracy. I'm not Tracy. If you yeah. want to talk to her, I'll bring her back. But don't call me that. I'm my own person. Right. That's kind of where Tal gets an attitude because she she's very much her own person and she feels she is and she doesn't want to be treated like she's me. Yeah. Well, I keep asking you all these questions. And, <laughs> uh, you know, maybe I can ask her some of those questions. Okay. Those yeah. Questions. Well, let me put this out because. Yeah. She doesn't smoke, I take it? She will. I don't, don't want her to. Yeah. But she'll do, she'll do anything. I just got her past the point that when she's eating or when I'm eating or she's eating, she doesn't just jump out and I come in mid swallow and choke to death. Right. <laughs> That's another kind of hazard that, that we don't think about, but yeah. Um, yeah. If you want to meet her, she can come out and say, hi, I, I would love to, I, I would love to okay. uh, love to meet her and talk to her. Get her down. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm good. I, I I don't know if you're aware, but my name's Kane. Uh, I'm a friend of Tracy's, and uh, yeah, you're the music guy. Uh, yeah, the music guy. Yeah, that that's a good thing. At least uh, she doesn't think I'm like a jerk or something, you know. No, mom likes you. Mom misses you. Good. Mom misses going and singing and and the uh, blow up guitars and stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think she. I think uh, Tracy even got me some uh, some different blow up uh, things. Yeah. When I didn't have them, so it was pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. So, do you also like music? Do you? Uh, oh yeah, I like yeah. all different kinds. Um, mom's, I like rock, but mom's more heavier than I am. Yeah. Um, yeah, Tracy kind of likes to rock, you know. <laughs> yeah, I do yeah. too, but I, I, I don't like. She goes like Slipknot and stuff, and I'm not super into that one. Yeah. But I like the '80s rock and stuff like that, and um, absolutely, I like rap. I love techno. My my daddy's a DJ, so awesome. I get it techno a lot. Yeah, and I'm starting to try to do it. So, but I like big band. I like kind of like everything, and I play the xylophone. Oh, excellent! My yeah. own, <laughs> Mom and Dad got me one for Christmas. I have my own little xylophone. I can play. It's a really great instrument, honestly. It's it's so fun to play. My son also plays that, and he plays uh, drums and everything in school. So yeah, yeah, Mama plays drums. So that's oh, yeah. kind of I think. And we got for Christmas, we got Daddy a space drum thing, mm -hmm. and then for his birthday, we got him a saxophone. Yeah, he grew up playing saxophone. So that's awesome. We're all musical. That it, the, the best families are, you know it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, do you have any, uh, do you remember, do you remember when I was hanging out with Tracy, were you, were you in, the, were you in there with, with her? Yeah, I was, a, I mean, yeah, I just didn't come out and, yeah. and mom didn't know, but I knew about stuff going on. I just wasn't close enough to the window to really know. Yeah. But absolutely. like I heard the music, I knew she was singing and, and I, saw things but a lot of what i know from when i wasn't out was um we have like a dvd in here mm -hmm. so i guess people would call it their memory but it's so i can catch up on stuff i've missed and she can catch up on my stuff that she's missed so everything and anything gets recorded yeah well, I feel like a I feel like an idiot but i didn't really give you a good intro to my audience so if, if people don't okay. know uh, we're we're speaking to Talia right now, um, and it, it is a pleasure to meet you. I, I'm excited. Thank you know, you. Tracy's been telling me a lot about you, but um, it's really exciting that you uh, wanted to come out and talk to me. Yeah, that's kind of my thing, like with my YouTube and everything, is that when I started watching the YouTube videos about DID and stuff, I wasn't happy with a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And so... They all sound, sounded really cold and mechanical, and I was like, no, I want to make my own, and I want to let people know what it's like from another perspective and educate them and and all this. And, I mean, yeah, I put a, he, daddy said, put a squash to the word that I hate the most, alt. Alt, yeah. <laughs> I don't like being called an alt because... 
that makes me feel like I'm less than. Yeah. And I'm not on my own. So I'm not an alt. I'm me. And the other word I didn't like that they use in those videos is system. Right. My head's not a system. We're a family. Yeah. So I think that might be why it works so good with us is we are a family. Yeah. And I mean, I'm, I range in age. So, and I hear a lot of people can do that. So we, I range in age from nine to 17. Depends how I want to present myself. Right. And um, most of the time I'm little, most of the time I'm nine, 10 though. And uh, so, I mean, I have mom, I have dad. I find, I, I finally have a dad that I want. Yeah. That's um, awesome. I didn't have, I didn't have a dad that was very nice to us. Yeah. So, so, um, now I got dad that understands everything with me. Well, does that and give you a it, little bit of closure having him, uh, to make you feel not necessarily closure, but, uh, does that does that yeah. make you feel you know feel wanted loved having, oh, yeah. having that sort of thing? Yeah, because um, I was kind of scared of, uh, like, well, the other guys mom had been with, I didn't want them for daddies because I didn't think it'd be safe with me. Yeah. Um, but daddy is is I don't know. I feel safe, comfortable. I feel okay around guys now. Because daddy shows me they're not all going to hurt me. Yeah. We're not so, all bad, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, Some of us no. are okay. And even the ones that mom says are okay, like friends and stuff, I'll still kind of look at them like, okay, you're okay now, but yeah, it's good. when's the other shoe going to drop and what's going to happen? Right. Um, But I've never <laughs> really done that with daddy, so... You got to kind of get to know a person more in order to really figure out uh, what you think of them. Yeah, I'm slower in a way than mom. <laughs> so do I, I mean, we don't know each other very well. We just met. I mean, uh, do I, do I frighten you in any way or make nah. you feel, it's okay. Nah. It's okay to tell me. <laughs> no, plus you're, you're <clears throat> way far away. So yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but I, no, uh, you don't. I mean, there's not a lot that scares me. Just makes me leery now. Yeah. Unless you're riding on your five minutes of fame. Daddy said I'm riding riding on my five minutes of fame. Well, keep, keep riding it, <laughs> right? <laughs> Sometimes five turns into 10, 20, 30. Yeah, but no, I, I come out. And that's another thing with videos we saw is they treated their people kind of like tools, like they only come out when they're under stress or they only come out. Right. Well, what happens to them when they're not out? Do they just go back into darkness? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, that's very, very sad to me that they would go back into nothing. Where do you go? Where do you go? I mean, are you just, are you, are you suggesting to me that you're there with, you know, you're, you and Tracy are there all the time together? Yeah. There's no darkness or... No, yeah. uh, all the time we're together, and and I have my own room. I we have I have kind of sort of a house. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that before me, no, there wasn't a house. But then once I came, I needed my own room. So right, I'm said you know construct something and and nice up there. I don't need money, so. Yeah. Must be nice. I just yeah, mom always tells me it must be nice. But up there, I can just, and I get what I want. It just shows up. So now I have a room and stuff. So awesome. when I want to go disconnect and be by myself and and don't want me and mom knowing each other, then I just go in my room. Yeah. So, And I have TV and Xbox and I have all kinds of stuff in there. And I have a cat. So Sounds like a great place, honestly. <laughs> Yeah, I'd love to have a place like that, you know. I mean, I kind of do, but then I got all the bills and everything to go with it. So, mom just yeah. won't let me have a roller coaster. Yeah, <laughs> I want a roller coaster. I told her a roller coaster, a little brother. Yeah, I'm waiting. I don't know what. <laughs> well, you, you never know, right? I mean, the sky's the limit on everything. She says her head's too small for a roller coaster, and she ain't giving me a little brother. Yeah. <laughs> 
Well, do you ever find, um, do you ever find yourself uh, when you do come out? I mean, is it hard for you to go back in or is it easy for you to, yeah, I guess um, what I'm saying is, is it easy for Tracy to come back and you to go back? Well, we, yeah, because she makes me. <laughs> yeah. But, um, no, because I know I'm I'm not worried about what I'm out. And mom says, okay, we got this to do or that to do. You got to go back to your room. Because mm -hmm. um, I know I'm going to be allowed back out. It's not yeah. like I had that fear of, oh, no, I'm going away forever and I'm never going to get back out again. Because right. I know mom and dad both are good at it, and dad asks for me to come out sometimes. And so I know that I'm free to come and go. And so I don't have to be afraid about being put away because I know I get back out. So yeah. no, going back in is not really a problem. Sometimes I'm having too much fun and I'm like, oh, five more minutes, five more minutes. So mom says that way I'm like a normal kid. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, pretty much we come and go pretty good well i i mean i really do appreciate you coming out to talk to uh, us and people can really understand you know how what what it's like for you and what it's like for tracy i mean to me in my opinion uh just by talking to you now it seems like you've got a pretty good life you know for yourself yeah we're we do pretty good i mean it's a like i said it's a learning thing all the time yeah. Um, right now, our big thing is just kind of putting out there to other people that it's not the scary, stereotypical thing that they think. It's not everything psychiatry says it is because a lot of them have it messed up too. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there's some people like that, but we all have it different. Right. Everybody has like not everybody can do what we do, and we can't do what some others can do. So. We all have it different, and they've psychiatry has made rigid rules about. Um, there's an automatic blackout, and if you don't have a blackout, you don't have it. Yeah. Well, so there's coexisting, and that means we're both out. Yeah, absolutely. We're not both facing, but we're both here. Yeah. Um. So that was kind of my thing with educating people is just to get out there that you know you don't have to be afraid of us or think we're weird we can be your new good friend and have totally different things in common with you than what mom does you've got the new the show uh the show that just came out on the cw uh in the twin cities you've got uh you know you just got married which is a, a pretty big <laughs> big thing you're kind of doing it all, man. I mean, your life is uh, on a trajectory like, uh, you know, I don't want to say a meteor ready to hit Earth, but you, you've got a pretty good uh, good trajectory going on right now. If things stay interesting. And nine times out of ten, you know, you work for certain goals, you get them. So, you know, the CW was a, it was a long work in progress, and we finally got that up and running, and we're still perfecting it. It is a work in progress. Uh, for those of you who are joining in, don't know, or even don't care, uh, Creature Feature was running for about 10 years on, on uh, in Omaha, usually on the Fox station. And then uh, I had an epiphany that, you know, I'm not going to get anywhere doing the show in Omaha. I'm just spinning my wheels. I want fame. I want fortune. I want girls. And, and, and. No, my wife is shaking her head. No, no girls. But anyway, uh, so we moved out. I decided to test market it for a year or half a year over in uh, the Quad Cities. You know, Davenport, Moline. Um, I don't know what the other two are that make the quad. But anyway, uh, did very well there. I uh, was very impressed. Our, our second week that the show was on, I did a little nerd con. And we had a number of people come to the con and, uh, you know, they wanted to get pictures and say that what they like to show. So I'm like, hey, people are watching it. This is awesome. They didn't know who Dr. Sanguinary is. They 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 were not aware of the character. They didn't even need to know any background on the character to enjoy the show. So that means anybody, anywhere, anytime can just click this show on and get right into it and have a good time. So we uh, were shopping it around to a couple of different big cities and uh, the CW in Minneapolis uh, reached out to us because they originally had a show called Mystery Science Theater 3000. Wow, yeah. Um, 
and they had hired uh, Joel to create that show for him, and it was uh, done at the station, I believe. And uh, after, I don't know how long it ran there, but Joel did buy out the show. Uh, I think the station uh, swapped uh, ownership or something. So he bought the show and then ended up taking it to cable and went on to fame and fortune. So anywho, they know where I'm coming from when I knocked on their door. So uh, I just said, hey, I'm Dr. Sanguinary. Boy, am I cheap. I want the cheapest time slot you got because this is basically a paid program. So give me cheap. And oh boy, they gave me cheap. 6.30 a.m. Saturday mornings, you know, um, like right after the farm report and, uh, you know, before some crappy kids show or teen news show or, or, or science show or something. It doesn't matter. Uh, we're on TV. We're, so we're starting here and we'll eventually work ourselves into a, a better time slot. It's just going to take some time. We have to wait for the My Pillow guy to die. We have to wait for My Electric Blanket Man to die. All these other infomercials that are sucking up the time that I want to get into. So it's just a little waiting game. And they're working with us. They're 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 a wonderful station. Uh, they're running the commercials for the show. Um, we're going out and doing a lot of uh, events with them. So um, at the beginning of November, we'll be out at the Twin Cities Con which is their one of their big nerd cons. So right. we'll be CW booth there handing out junk to all the, the boys and girls and whatnot. So that'll be fun. And uh, CW gets into all sorts of, you know, neat little events and whatnot. So, oh yeah, I'll be following them around. Like <laughs> you wouldn't believe handing out stuff. So um, off to a very good start. Um, they haven't had anything like this uh, in years. I was uh visiting some local businesses and whatnot and talking to some business owners. And they said that maybe 10, 15, 20 some odd years ago, they had some Count Crapula guy or something that tried to do a creature feature show and didn't, didn't last, didn't stick. And I said, that was me, you know, that <laughs> I, told Crap, him, I blew it. I'm going to stick because, you know, the, uh, Mind you, you know, in Omaha, there's the the the, the brand recognition, as we say, yeah. but I'm going into a market that they don't know anything that, you know, they have, uh, maybe they, they watch the, the, the guy with the top hat, um, you know, uh, on Saturday nights, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, my, my show is definitely a lot more toxic, so, um, uh we'll see if they're if and when they're ready for us we'll eventually make a jump to a, a late night thing i've already had one episode yeah. uh boshed by the suits um they saw it and they had to run it through legal twice and they're like nope you 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 they said you can do this but you can't do this but we'll let you do it when you move to a later time slot <laughs> yeah. like, okay that's fine um so uh they don't and that, want to scare grandma going to church in uh, in an hour or two, right? They don't want to <laughs> give grandma a heart attack. Uh, no, it ain't grandma that's going to have the heart attack. It'd be grandpa. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Well, I know, I know why too. You know, I I know why because I watch, so I I get why grandpa would probably have a, a blood flowing in different spots and everything. <laughs> oh well, you know what? I'm going to give you an exclusive. So I'm going to give you the here uh, right here right now or whatever you can debut this little video that didn't yeah. pass the censorship thing and you can show it to your all your friends out there so um this was a uh, a little filler that we did um uh so uh you know like i said folks can watch it and it will eventually run at some juncture in time but we have to fix a few things it's <laughs> on it, but it, it, it's suitable. It's definitely suitable for the internet. As a matter of fact, it's a, it won't even make the internet blush. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a lot of terrible things on the internet. I can only imagine. You know what I mean? Like I, I it may not even be scratching the surface on the dark web. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, it's broadcast ready. So yeah, it's not cat torture videos or anything like that. <laughs> so I think you're. No, right. no, it's 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 it's. Fun, wholesome family entertainment with a magician. Exactly. You know, people like magic tricks and magicians and their pretty assistants. Yes, uh -huh. they do. yes, they do. And the, so, for the for the listeners of Lincoln and Omaha, I do want to say that you can watch the show on uh, CreatureFeatureTV.com. Uh, you can watch it. Uh, something that stuck out to me was you posted uh, 
you know, it's always available. It's always available worldwide, 24-7, 365, except from Russia, screw Putin. And, uh, and it's always free. And I thought that was a killer tag, uh, especially right now, very timely. And uh, <laughs> it just uh, we, everything. We try to stay as hip as we can. We can't keep up with the South Park guys, but we try. Yeah, so, you guys do. Yeah, but anybody can watch this anytime, anywhere. Um, you know, we, we, it's, it's strange because in the past 10 years that I, I've done this show, I've watched all sorts of demographics change. Mm -hmm. And hosted horror shows were in the toilet decades ago. Right. You know, um, uh, the guy with the top hat has managed to, you know, uh, syndicate himself, which is fine. He's got all the stuff to do that. There was another guy out of uh, Detroit that had syndicated himself and that was around the time i started coming into the picture uh -huh. and uh his show i could only catch if i was in lincoln yeah because he was on there's just too many little crummy cable stations um and he ran for about a, a couple of years and then bellied up uh, so it's and then there are probably i can probably count on just one hand uh the uh the hosts that are left on broadcast television um whatever's on the internet you don't count ah, ah. so um yeah there's the, the dime a dozen on the internet um everybody's got a garage band are That's there not... are there a lot of uh like like youtube pretenders and things like that like people doing like youtube creature feature type stuff i mean without there's, them. tons of them there's a new one every week you know um and it's, you know, it's either people reviewing movies or, you know, they grab the public domain movie and, you know, try to do their comedy shtick or whatever. Right. God bless them. Um, you know, uh, it's a tough racket. You know, um, I, I've got this show on and, and it's taken me years to perfect what we have as far as our skit comedy, because as we started doing the show, uh, you know, I, we were maybe on for what five to eight minutes with worth a doc shtick with whatever crappy movie we we're running. But as it caught on, people wanted more and more of the shtick and less and less of the crappy movie, which I can't say I don't blame them. Yeah, right. Uh, so it ended, it ended up being about 20 minutes on average, which is long. Um, so, uh, we had kind of kicked around the idea for a number of years about doing, you know, a Dr. Sanguinary show or, you know, something that was just the skit comedy. So I said, well, with the, the CW here, why don't we just try doing the skit comedy show, you know, and then we can throw in little horror shorts and, and, you know, I've got a, a catalog of all sorts of goofy, wacky things. We make all these little filler shorts, which is, like the magician one that I'm going to let you guys run. <laughs> um, you know, uh, so we're, we're focusing on the comedy bit, which that's what we love doing. Uh, when we get together and shoot these shows, this is how we blow off steam at the end of the week. You know, um, right. he gets together. We work very hard. We work very fast. We try to knock out two episodes um, on a weekend afternoon. So usually it takes on average about maybe two to three hours per episode to shoot mm -hmm. depends on how much mess I got to make or whatever, you know, um, <laughs> the editing, uh, that takes on average about eight hours per episode because you have to add all the little sound effects or once in a while I'll spend the money and, you know, I had to buy an explosion the other day. Yeah. Um, and whatnot so you know I'm, I'm keeping up with with putting goofy little stupid things in there um just to you know make things visually interesting and of course the show is always evolving i can't evolve i have to stay within my little dr sanguinary parameters here you know i can't go out and and, and do glitter you know uh i you know like i can't be i can't be the, the chameleon that bowie was you know yeah um but uh, the rest of my show can. So the the set is always evolving. I'll have an Igor cage up pretty soon. That's almost done. So Igor will be back where he's supposed to be. And I can throw people in there to get all chewed up and whatever. And Igor can have his wild parties and raves and whatever in there. Um, that'll be fun. 
uh, we've got a whole bunch of uh, new cast members. Right. So, um, uh, and it's just very interesting because, uh, you know, a lot of these people that, that come in, you know, they might come out and see me at, I don't know, Comic-Con or something. I got a table set up, hawking my t-shirts and whatever. Um, selling corpses out of the back of my car. <laughs> Uh, and they'll they'll come up and they'll they'll chit chat and stuff, but you know you can kind of see it in their eyes. They're like, I kind of want to be on the show. I can do these characters, and I'm like, okay, well, you know, hey, I'm game. You know, I pay this much. I pay nothing. <laughs> so if you can do that, uh, come on in, and we'll we'll see what what you're made out of. So we've got a quite a quite a few new cast members, and we got some uh, new ones coming in uh, very soon here. So. Uh, our shooting schedule, of course, has has ramped up with you know being on TV. Hey there, human friend. Are you tired of your beard looking like a bird's nest after a windstorm? Whoa, what? Who's there? <laughs> it's just me, your friendly neighborhood Sasquatch. I couldn't help but notice your, uh, rustic beard situation. Right? Thanks for pointing that out, Bigfoot. But what can I do about it? Fear not, my follicle challenge friend. Introducing the Elegant Sasquatch Grooming Company. We specialize in grooming products that'll make your beard as majestic as a redwood tree. Elegant Sasquatch? Sounds fancy. What do they have? We've got everything a discerning Sasquatch or human needs to keep their facial foliage in top condition. Beard washes to cleanse away the forest crime. Beard balms to tame those wild whiskers. Beard oils to nourish and hydrate. And beard butters to make it as soft as a bunny's fur. Wow, that's quite the lineup. Why should I choose the Elegant Sasquatch, though? Because, my friend, we believe in sophistication for our outer beast. Just because you're a Sasquatch or a human doesn't mean you can't be classy. I never thought I'd hear a Sasquatch talk about sophistication. All right, you've convinced me. Where can I find these products? Head on over to the Elegant Sasquatch Co.etsy.com and use the code SUPERSHOW to save 20%. Your beard will thank you. Thanks, Sasquatch. I'll make sure to check it out. And hey... Maybe next time we meet, my beard will be as elegant as yours. <laughs> now that's the spirit, my friend. Happy grooming. Absolutely. So, so walk me through how you uh, how you got into being a. Bigfoot researcher and all of this stuff. Tell me what, uh, did you have a personal experience, something that happened? What got you into yeah. it? Yeah, I started, you know, started having experiences back in the mid seventies in Arizona. Okay. I lived up in the white mountains in Lakeside Pine Top area. Yeah. And I can tell you the account. Um, I was walking a friend of mine's girlfriend home at about two 30 in the morning and Said goodnight to her. She went in through her bedroom window because that was what kids did at that age. Right. I was about 15 years old. Um, this is probably early October. I was walking back home along a main little side road. There wasn't any traffic. Mm -hmm. And the dogs at this last house were just raising hell on the left-hand side of the road. So these dogs had kind of attacked us before right up to the fences. And they're vicious, you know. Yeah. So I started crossing the road and crossing the house. I got about halfway across the house and the dogs just went silent. Okay. And these are two big, you know, vicious kind of dogs, you know, yeah. and just silent. And I kept walking and I'd get past the house and this creature started just roaring up in the tree about, I would estimate it about 35, 40 feet up in the tree, about 50 feet feet 60 feet away from the road yeah and it was just it was vibrating so loud it was like standing next to a concert speaker mm -hmm. you know that reverberation you feel yeah of course. well i could feel that from 50 feet away or more wow. 
Jeez. It was its roar kept going like fifteen or twenty seconds. Yeah. Just as pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was loud. I mean, it was up until that time, probably the loudest thing I've ever heard, except for a concert. Yeah. You know, you know, let's saying something, you know, louder than your car stereo, you know, it was just right. Just ear piercing and just, you know, gut wrenching. I just something just told me don't run, just keep walking. You right. know, and that takes you know, at that age, it takes something patience not to run. Yeah, but, I, I would have ran, man. <laughs> I would have bolted yeah. out. Well, trust me, with Bigfoot, you don't want to do that. Yeah. Because then you become prey for any right. kind of any kind of predator. You become prey yeah. as soon as you start running. Whether they're just going to chase you out, the, out of there or – and you can't outrun them. You can't – their lung capacity is amazing. You know, there's just no way. Their speed is just – I've had them run up to a, behind our car at 40 to 45 miles an hour. Mm -hmm. And it was loping behind us. Yeah. I mean, loping. Not <laughs> not running, <Yeah>. not <laughs> flat out, loping. Well, they're us. tall, right? So, I mean, just think about a tall yeah. person in general. Their stride and everything is, like, way different than the rest of us. I mean, they're they're doing exactly what you're saying. I mean, they are, they're really moving with those legs. Yeah. yeah. And they... They don't move like humans. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a, a mid tarsal break in their foot. So their foot bends in the middle where ours bends toward the toes. Theirs yeah. bends in the middle. Interesting. So it, you can, all that weight can shift from the back part of the foot to the front part of the foot when it's walking. Wow. And you're talking about 11, 12, 1300 pounds on some of these boys. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's, you know, people say, oh, it can't be that heavy. I said, yeah, you can. And look at a buffalo. Look at a rhinoceros. You know, there's so many creatures that are way bigger than that. Right. And these are. And when they stomp up at you, you it feels like tree trunks stomping. Yeah, I'll bet. Well, do you get frustrated with people? Because most people, when they think of Bigfoot, they think of the iconic picture, you know, that they show on everything where there's a Bigfoot walking across. He's kind of like a side silhouette type deal that's and patty. people think that's it yeah. right i mean do well, you feel female. that that was real do you feel that that was a real picture yeah oh yeah okay. yeah i mean and, and i don't get frustrated i don't have to prove to anyone yeah it's, yeah of course i know i know and hundreds of thousands of people know that they're real have seen them have okay. eyewitnesses i mean i've i've talked to probably about 700 people in my life yeah. since i started doing this in the 70s that that believe and then there's probably twelve hundred that know that have seen them. There's no doubts in their oh, mind. Oh, I be I believe you. I mean, I I feel yeah. the same way about ghosts. I mean, I've had enough experiences. I've lived in a haunting. I've done all this where they, nobody has to. I don't have to prove to anybody that there's there's ghosts. There's, I already know. Yeah. It's up to Definitely. them to figure it out. I can give them the information. I can show them our investigations. They can take out of it what the, the skeptic is always going to be there. I mean, honest, in your field, in my field, it's it's all the same. There's going to be the skeptics who are like, nope, it's not real. It doesn't happen. This, But but we, yeah. I don't know. What, how do you get to be that type of a mind is what I wonder to myself. Like, how can you be so shut off? Are you afraid? What do you think <laughs> it is with these people? <laughs> uh, well, I mean, until some people, it's like the show me state, you know, like I got to yeah. see it from my own eyes. Right. Well, you're going to be shocked when you do. Man. <laughs> if you don't expect it, you're not going to even even when you do see it, it's still amazing. Um, as far as the paranormal. Um, I want to do like a seance perhaps someday and try and reach past on Bigfoot. Right. Yeah. I think that's something that hasn't been tapped into. And maybe your help or your people could get something facilitated. Mm -hmm. Maybe we could do it together and get something together to do it. Yeah. Because obviously, you know, however long they live, you know, and I think living out in nature, they might live longer than us. Right. You know, much longer. Yeah. Maybe even biblical numbers. Who knows? You know, that that's, you know, to be determined because they take care of their dead. They don't, you know, there's there's so many things in the paranormal and some of it says that they can you know cloak themselves or 
go into different dimensions in this world, into other worlds. There's right. there's a lot of paranormal in Bigfoot that people don't realize. There is. I, some, I you mentioned Arizona, for example. Uh, I can remember listening to Art Bell years ago, talking to big, uh, people talking about Bigfoot. And uh, they actually like put on some like uh, some of the Bigfoot calling and different things like or I should say like the the Sasquatch talk and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, Samurai they, they were, called, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they were talking yeah. about the Native Americans believe that they are, uh, you know, uh, yeah, they, <laughs> there you go. Get loose with this show, man. Yeah, Get a more. This, uh, this uh, I mean, I'm like, like a grown child. This is how I wear my hat. So. You know, I, I should probably have my hat off or, you know, have my hat <laughs> forward, but I don't care. <laughs> don't matter. But anyways, um, the, they, the Native Americans talked about them being like dimensional creatures and coming in and out and part of like their folklore. Are you aware of like all the Indian folklore? More than you know. <laughs> oh, uh, I, well, I figure that's why I'm asking. You know it more than me. Yeah. I mean, I grew up in Arizona, up in the White Mountains, you know, for many, you know, quite a few years. And yeah. a lot of the Indian stories talk about them, like, trailing, you know, they'd be going down a mountain on horseback, and Bigfoot would be 50 or 60, 100 yards away, right. trailing just right with them, either yeah. up or down, without any problem. Um, and there's, they don't like to share as much with non-tribal members as others. Mm -hmm. So I have... I have tapped into different Native American friends, friends and family that that can help. Right. And they, they, they divulge a lot of things that their oral history is passed down. Yeah. And that's way more important than any book that you can find a lot of times. I agree. Absolutely. It is. Yeah. But, you know. The paranormal part, like I say, some people, you know, don't dwell in it at all. I, I don't disprove it I until it's proven not to be true to me. Mm -hmm. I need to, you know, I like to be a skeptic. And, you know, I say, well, maybe you're right. You know, until I know, I can't say that that's what has happened. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've heard accounts where people say that they've seen a Bigfoot snap off a big branch off of a tree. Mm -hmm. hit a tree and then go into another dimension yeah but you know that's that's out there but you know i can't say this and it didn't happen yeah. and they're they're pretty believable in all everything that they've said up to that point right so it's important to realize and vet people before you even go into into that little more into vet invest your time into their investigation. You well, have I like to, to take everyone people. seriously, which I'm sure you do. You know, I like to take everyone's yeah. claims seriously because why you, you, you hit on something to me that I think is a, is a, a great point of all these thousands of people that, you know, that are involved in this. I mean, and same with paranormal, not everybody's nuts. Okay. Like uh, there have been, there have been reports throughout time and you can't tell me that thousands and thousands and thousands of people, maybe even millions over, over history. Of course. I, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but you get what I mean. Yeah, they, are they all alive. nuts? Yeah. Are they all crazy? I don't think so. I think they're actually seeing something. I think that yeah. uh, we just don't understand what it is yet. Yeah. When, when you hear an account of, like a horse and buggy from the 1800s mm -hmm. and then there's this family that's dressed in well kind of like you know cavalry kind of hat and you know the kids are there and there's you know and this particular this was a like 11 year old child telling me some of this right that he could see these you know like dark black around the eyes you know and otherwise looked very normal mm -hmm. so are they looking back at something that happened a hundred years ago at that cabin, you know? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's things that just aren't explainable unless you put the paranormal or Bigfoot into that equation. Right. And then it can make sense. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. um, it happens. <laughs> you know, I, the only Bigfoot account that I can remember being told uh, as a, I've, I have not encountered Bigfoot. I grew up around like the Ozark mountains and stuff like, you know, in Missouri, yeah. So, you know, northern Arkansas. So that's heavily wooded also. I mean, you know, the Ozark Mountains, are, of course, they're not like the Rockies or something, but it's it's vast trees. It's it's wildlife. It's all yeah. that. 
But I know I don't recall any of that. I think there's a cryptid called Momo that they refer to, yeah. Uh, yeah. which is kind of like a stinky ape or kind of like the skunk ape that they refer to in a sense. Yeah, thousands of names for Yeah, Sasquatch, you can call Bigfoot. it all, you know, call them maybe call anyone for them, Bigfoot, yeah. right? Like just like there's I call them family because well, yeah. To me, they're like family because I don't want them hurt. And we're in, you know, my my Bigfoot, you know, Pen Pennsylvania Bigfoot project is a no kill project. Mm -hmm. we, we're there to help people get them through their traumatic experiences. We don't, you know, we're just putting up, you know, bylines and guides for people to understand a little bit more. Right. But you don't want to go knocking on trees when you go into an area. You don't want to be doing whoops and yells in an area. You need to be respectful and understand what that type of creature, what they want or what they don't want. Yeah. You know, there's, there's a lot involved in it. So it, there's, you try and educate people a little bit, but, you know, don't just go banging on trees if you don't know what you're saying or what they're doing, you know. It's the yelling. same with the paranormal. Don't don't go don't go looking for trouble and provoking and doing all this stuff if you don't want if you don't want it to happen, you know. What I mean?